Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This here is the Christian Trucker, and today we are talking about repairing trailers. That's right, I am repairing another trailer for our direct shipper. What is this, number three or four? Anyway, this one was probably the worst. I expected to have a little help on this one, and, uh, well, <laughs> that didn't come through for me. Anyway, what we got here is... A 53 foot dry van roll up door with a lift gate. She's pretty old. I forget what year model. Uh, the, the floors were rough. These bits, that's uh, probably about $70 worth of bits. And for some reason, they kept snapping. And the only thing I can figure is I was trying to use my half inch drive and it was too slow. So I started using my 3 8 drive, which has a higher RPM. And I managed to finish the holes. Anyway, the uh, half-inch drive, you have to have it to remove the bolts out of the floor. A 3 8 drive just does not have enough torque to turn that screw out of the floor. Well, my half-inch drive that I've been using for the others, there it is. It broke. DeWalt, great brand. It broke. It was a pile of poo. Pile of poo. Yes, it was. Anyway, I had to go get another half-inch drive drill to finish the job. And we're going to send that one back and hopefully get our money back. Uh, but, yeah, we managed to get it tore apart. And I didn't know if I was going to. Uh, this one here liked to whoop me. It liked to got me. I didn't know if I was going to be able to finish in time. Uh, the front up here where you're looking at now was the worst. But my dad saved my rump. I went and got my dad. You know, he can't see. He's blind as a bat. You know, he can't drive or nothing. But he's he's done a lot in his life, and he's still a great resource. And he saved my rump. Those front ones have a flat bar where I could shoot up the drill bit from, from the bottom and have the pilot hole for my bolt and use their same hole so I didn't have to drill through the front ones. But now, see, these back here, they have the H frame. And the H-frame, you can't come in from the bottom because the bolts only go through the top of the frame. So I was able to put those right there in the front by pilot drilling through their same hole. And we were able to put the bolts in without having to drill through the metal. Now that piece right there was a little... I had to use the table saw to get that piece on that edge. Um, you'll see it down here. I actually had to make that one right there. See? I had to cut it down and cut it down and i made that l so it would fit right down beside that board because see those boards are 12 inches but the one on that one side is 14 inches and the and the guy could not get that board so we had to make do and that's how we had to fit that in there and it's it's been commonplace on all these trailers because we use a crack sealer to seal them from the road moisture and from the rain and everything from coming up under the trailer and getting on the merchandise. Because, you know, we say a lot of furniture and stuff. And this crack filler right here is Kevlar reinforced. You can have a, a fairly decent hole in your trailer and fill it with that. Or put like some filler wood and then put that over it. And that stuff is tough. So it does really well. I, I recommend it to fill your cracks, especially if you got a little spot that's letting a little moisture in your trailer. That stuff comes with gloves. Uh, but I do recommend before you try to do a trailer job, you get some of them right there, some knee pads. Knee pads save my knees. They still look like hamburger meat because I want a big old boy crawling around on my hands and knees. And, uh, well, the good Lord knows how to get you on your knees. But see, that's what it looks not beautiful when you get done. But we're looking for functionality. We're not looking for beauty. I mean, you won't want water coming through your floor. You don't want that. So, But this is some video of the tear-out. That's not something you like to see when you look in <laughs> at your trailer. Is You don't want to see the ground. Uh, but yeah, we tore out them two long pieces and replaced them. And it made a... Made it a lot better because both of those boards were pretty bad off. And that one right there, you see they had valley metal on that one. That hole right there was pretty, pretty rough. Uh, but I was able to save that board on the outside over there for now. I think we're good for at least four or five years before we have to do any more replacing. 
And that was the goal to go ahead and get it done where he don't have to worry about any more replacing and he can use this trailer. Because, you know, when trailers start getting old, people start trying to retire them. But, you know, it's good business practice to get as much as you can out of your equipment. I think if there's a way to keep it in the fleet, keep it in the fleet until the bitter end. And that's what he's trying to do, and I appreciate that. I think it's a good thing. It's a good business model. Uh, trucks can be a little different because some trucks are just money pits, even from the day you buy them. You'll know a money pit because you just won't keep it out of the shop, and you just got to let it go. And then some trucks are perfectly great, and they just keep running and running and running like the Energizer Bunny. So that's what we was doing this week. That's my dad down there. He He didn't want me to get him on video, but I snuck one of him. So God bless. Catch y'all on the next ride.